first of all, what is it that you look for in a track? Um, it's really hard to articulate. <laughs> um, I'm always kind of looking for great, I guess. Um, but yeah, I mean, look, trying to kind of break that down a little bit more kind of granularly, it's, it's trying to look for something that feels interesting, be it original, exciting. It's, it's quite often the sum of a lot of parts. You know, you might just hear a record, but you're just like, like code is a good example. I just heard it, it was like, holy shit. Like, you know, yeah. and, and actually like, I've kind of been speaking with the Camel Fat guys for quite a long time. I'd actually tried to sign a record for Bez called House, like H-A-U-S, like about a year and a half before. Yeah. Think, like it had four or five samples in. I cleared four and we hit the last one we couldn't clear. We couldn't so it. It out. But I'd also said no to about eight records they'd sent over because they just didn't feel right. But this one, I was just like, okay, that's yeah. I love that. Did um, you know straight away? Yeah, but I, I'm... With something like that, a record that you just hear like on one list and kind of go straight away, you probably get like one or two a year, if I'm totally honest. But really? You're, you know, to that level. But yeah, there's a couple of records where I can literally just kind of remember exactly where I was and what I was doing when I first heard it. But yeah. there's not many. Like, I think the most recent one that I was just like, wow, okay, one listen, that's a smash, was like Joel Corey Head and Heart. Like I had an early kind of, play from someone within the label and it was just like okay that's that's it <laughs> like <laughs> if i could if i could have done it i categorically would but you know yeah, yeah. Like, I'm an amazing job with joel um so like outside of those kind of rare opportunities where something just hits you like a lightning bolt it's it's as i say like a combination of lots of things like you know does it feel interesting does it feel exciting does it sonically good like who's made it what's their story what's the world it sits in like, who will be the consumer for this? What do I think I can do to it? What can I add to it? Is it, you know, is the consumer liking it? Is it, mar- you know what I mean? Like there's, there's about 20, 30 things that kind of go through my head that inform like yeah. the conversation. Yeah. And it's never the same. Which Everyone's makes- always different. Literally, yeah. You know, every, every record's kind of judged independently. You know what I mean? Mm. And how how do you how do you find your music? Is it music that that you receive? Is it music that you go out and look for? Is it a mixture of both? How does it, how does that work for you? Again, it just kind of varies hugely. You know, like yeah, demos are sent in, and you know, like with the best will in the world, I do try and listen to everything, it, it, even if it takes me quite a long time to get back to people sometimes. But like, I have conversations with like managers, lawyers, peers, artists. You know, I listen to a lot of uh, radio, sorry. I go, like, I check out DJ mixes, streams. I look at dates for a lot. I used to go to gigs. (laughs) And I will go to gigs again. Um, You know, like, and I have a DJ background. So, like, I'm always looking at the crowd's reactions to a record. You know, it tells you a lot about the music. But in the absence of that, I'm kind of, I have to find alternatives to do that. So data has become, in the last 12 months, like a very important part of how I go about my my kind of music discovery because you know through data I can see what I would normally see in a crowd you know people resonating with the music or not are they liking it are they saving it you know all that kind of stuff and I'll also go and seek out artists that I love or I'm excited by you know through that process I'll I'll hear a lot of music and I just might hear something that's like oh that's great okay that's not necessarily right to do but let me get in touch what else have you got and then start the world so it's it yeah it's very varied how much music do you receive on a weekly basis? Uh, a lot. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I, uh, a lot. As well, look, I'm, I'm absolutely not complaining. It's an absolute privilege to be serving people's kind of yeah. work and artistry, which is why I really do try to listen to everything. Like, yeah. it's it's not always totally possible, and I do apologise, and feel free to chase me every now and again. <laughs> but even if it takes me a month, I try and kind of get back to people. And what do you think is the best way to get music over to a label? So, I mean, it's, it's an interesting one because some labels are kind of very open and kind of have like, you know, this is our thing. I don't, I think it's quite rare that like labels are kind of hiding their contacts, but they're not always necessarily making it totally obvious. Like, you know, a cold email is one way, but it often like is that it's a cold email. It lacks, you know, a certain amount of context. But I think that, you know, if you are going to do a cold email, um, like, you know, don't overwhelm. Think about who's on the receiving end. 
of of that dialogue um are they busy you know how much time they have to kind of check this out like what are the headlines like i'm even doing that you know i I try and think like that a lot because i'm communicating with you know say spotify or apple or, or you know radio producers or presenters or whatever and i know that they get bombarded to a crazy degree so i might have 20 records i want to talk to them about but i'm probably only going to talk to them about three yeah three that they really need to know about um you know if they kind of open up the dialogue a little bit more yeah i can put more in and i think it's a very similar thing like don't overwhelm people try and keep it like very sim you know simplistic but also kind of tell your story you know a paragraph if you know what i mean yeah um you know, but beyond, but that's just one thing with like kind of cold calling. It's like, I think surrounding yourself like with the music and the scene like adds so much context to what you do. Like obviously you do it in a way that works for you. But I think, again, like I mentioned at the start, like I wasn't necessarily like thinking this was what I was going to do as a job, but I was, you know, through going to record shops, working in a record shop, like being around clubs and promoters or whatever, I was just able to make lots and lots of contacts and meet people and have the as I say again the opportunity for opportunity Mm -hmm. so I think that's a real huge part of it because yeah you can send an email cold and something might jump out if someone happens to listen to it but if you kind of get like you know an artist or whatever kind of singing your praises and like going you've got to hear this new kid oh my god he's amazing you're gonna listen yeah of course you know, it's it's an interesting one. It's like, you know, as I say, the, the way it, this is like a weird analogy that I sometimes use for quite a lot of things. Bear with me a little bit. <laughs> like, it's like you've, you've got a room, okay? Yeah. And you've got a door to your room. But if you have a lot, the more doors you have, the more ways people have to get into your room. And when they come into your room, what are they going to discover? And are they going to stay in there? So like, excuse for really weird analogy that's good (laughs) it's like you want people to have as many routes into your room as possible and when they come in you want them to find interesting things and stay there yeah so that's kind of the mentality of like that so like but that could be you know one door could be social media another door could be gigs another door could be a live stream another door could be previous releases and associations another door could be you know friends and family that you work with like, I mean, as in, like, artist friends or whatever. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, record, you know, again, I'm showing my age, I hung around record stores. They were, like, hubs for the community. I know that's obviously changed to a certain degree. Um, but the principle is still exactly the same. Yeah. I, I We've heard this quite a lot, you know, like, the, the point of, of networking and getting yourself out there, how important it is. Um, I mean, I know, obviously, now it's really difficult with, with everything that's going on, but normally um it's definitely like one of the best ways to obviously to meet new people to make connections to get your music out there and and that's by attending gigs going to things like ade festivals and kind of getting to know people so 100 percent. i think it's about like you know surrounding yourself with kind of like-minded people and for people yeah. you kind of feel aligned with or aspire to be aligned with because yeah. they're you know, you're likely to kind of be thinking in the same way and trying to achieve the same things and kind of talking to the same people so like yeah you know i think that's always quite again like it kind of maximizes the possibility for good things to happen i think yeah absolutely and i can't even imagine the amount of music you've probably received over your over your career so from your experience what are like the main do's and don'ts when sending your music to a label so touch on it before like don't overwhelm um don't you know overwhelm. Like, it's even with the best word in the world, even if I'm trying to listen to everything, if I get a sound card link with like 12 tracks on, you're probably getting, you know, five seconds, 10 seconds of the first two tracks. And if, unless I'm hearing something, I'm, I'm out, unfortunately, purely because of time. I don't have an hour to listen to that. Um, so I'd say like kind of keep it to kind of three tracks or less. Clearly mark your files. Um, so if there is downloads, so like have your email address full information because, you again, you wouldn't believe like who sent me like hot hat 21 like i don't like i really like it i can't find you because i maybe downloaded it then my phone started ringing with something that i had to deal with and I've oh kind of that would be it. such a shame <laughs> it happened like i put things on social media before where it's like who sent me this file but like obviously that helps um again like kind of show links to your world maybe like by the yeah. social media because again 
when I mentioned before, like when I'm kind of going through all those kind of calculations, not calculations, but all the things I'm kind of thinking about when I'm listening to a record, it's like an A&R is having a very informed opinion about something. Yeah. We're kind of like, the, and the, the information is informed about like, as I say, both the creative side but the business side. So it's like, if I'm signing something for a record label, ultimately my responsibility is to sell records. So I have to know what I'm selling and who I'm selling it to. So the more context I have, around both the music and the artist that is kind of fronting it, I guess, or whatever, is, is, is important as well. So I need to have a sense of understanding of that. Um, you know, so we, we're all, yeah, links to your world, social media, like whatever, previous support, people that are like liking you, whatever, kind of that helps me understand who you are and where you're coming from. Yeah. And like, yeah, we're all, as I mentioned, relatively time poor, like everyone is. Um, so try and keep things pretty concise and have your contact details. Like, trust me, if a label hears something of interest, you as an artist will be the first person to hear about it. Yeah. <laughs> you know, we'll be knocking on your door, trust me. Sorry.